Mobile Integrated Healthcare is the opportunity to employ providers differently. I couldn't catch my breath. I literally couldn't catch my breath. Uh, do, you, do you have a rescue inhaler as well? The University of Maryland Medical Center and Baltimore City Fire Department partnered together to think about how do we embrace the community and how do we support their health. And let's think outside the walls of a hospital. If you're looking at the root causes of what, how we got here, it's really health disparities and the social determinants of health. So this is actually moving the care and moving this health support outside the walls of an office, outside the walls of a hospital, so that we actually figure out where patients need that support and get them that support where they are. Number one, we're on the 911 side. Number two, we're on the transition side to help them get from the hospital to their home more effectively. And this is new and novel. This is as innovative as you can get. Baltimore City is the second busiest EMS system in the nation. We're transporting about 100,000 times a year, so every 5.2 minutes we're transporting somebody to the emergency department, regardless of complaint. Oftentimes, people get transported to the emergency room that aren't really qualified or necessary for the emergency room. The program Minor Definitive Care Now is aimed at the 911 system and trying to improve care and project care to where folks need the care in a low acuity setting. Partnering a paramedic up with either a nurse practitioner or a physician. In West Baltimore, somebody calls 911, it's for a minor type complaint. The team has the ability to respond to the scene. If the patient consents in for treatment on scene, all 911 resources are returned to service. My feet went from under me and my whole back and my head banging up against the steps. I don't know who came first, the ambulance or this program, and asked me did I want to go to the emergency room, did I have to go to the emergency room. So basically did everything that the emergency room would have done in now. In essence, it's a mobile urgent care. When we monitor the 911 system, see a call that could be taken by the minor definitive care now team, and we actually dispatch with lights and sirens right to your home, right to your street corner, and we see you right there, and hopefully we treat you right there on scene. We show up in these vehicles. Uh, they have all the typical medical equipment that a regular ambulance would have for a paramedic, and they also have some equipment that the nurse, practi for nurse practitioners and the doctors can use. I've had one patient already that she cut her hand, I think, on some open glass, and the nurse practitioner was able to suture her hand on scene rather than her being in the ER. It's pretty good because had I had to go to the emergency room, I would have been out there all day long and um, probably would have got the same type of treatment I got from um, the University of Maryland program that they had come to see me. So I think I made up pretty good. The model for our transitional health care program is that our paramedics go bedside in the hospital, see a patient right in the hospital, and they say, hey, listen, we have this opportunity for you, and for the next 30 days, we'll follow you in your home. When they're ready to be discharged, we have a team from the fire department and also the medical center who goes bedside, discusses our program, our transitional health support program with the patient. And then within 48 hours, about 80% of our patients are seen in their home, had an initial evaluation done by our paramedic team. From your discharge, how do you feel? Slightly better, slightly worse, the same? I feel good, but I started coughing and choking this morning and couldn't get my breath again. And then our interdisciplinary team, our social work, case managers, pharmacists, doctors, nurses, all look at that assessment and say, okay, this person needs help with transportation, help with insurance, help with vision, help with dentistry, coordination of their care between a cardiologist, a pulmonologist, an endocrinologist, and then we pick that person up and for 30 days we embrace that patient so that they're actually able to better understand how to support their own health. The most common questions that they ask of me when I go into the home are medication questions. Why do I take this medication? Uh, what's the purpose of me taking this medication? How often should I take it? And am I going to have any side effects from this medication? So that's one of the common questions that they ask. 
our goal is to kind of keep her from going back in and help address any needs or concerns that she has in the meantime and help you know kind of coordinate all the different care that she may have received in the hospital and outpatient prior to that make sure she has her medications make sure you know she has everything that she needs to be successful in staying healthy the goal of the program is to educate these patients so that they know what to do to stay healthy to stay out away from being admitted to the hospital. And these are innovative approaches and we're pushing the envelope on supporting folks health. This is a great program that's I cannot wait to expand across the entire city. It's something that is really needed that will really be able to help the citizens of Baltimore. The difference in this program is we've made an impact and I think we're making a difference. And that to us and our entire team really drives us and motivates us to keep doing it and keep building it and keep getting better. So not only are our patients satisfied, not only are our quality metrics starting to really starting to have an impact, but lastly our patients find value to this and it costs less. And that's I think a potential national model that we in Baltimore are championing.